housing has always been there since 1997. We've been having housing. What are the other things that my government is talking about that will help and encourage this growth? Okay. Um, well, can I? Am I allowed to disagree with you? Sure. Yes. But of course. I, <laughs> <laughs> and I hope you do. I, I think. I think uh, many people who are listening to this or watching this do know what we're talking about when we're talking about economic growth. Okay. Um, we're talking about, uh, I'm using government statistics here, government information. They've reported that construction, for instance, uh, on the island has increased by 30% during this, during this year. Um, the mining and quarrying has increased considerably. Since uh, the 2010 period, which I understand, during 2010 there was a lot of uh, volcanic crashing, um, revenue, tourism projection, tourism was low, uh, there were some issues with regards to the ferry, I believe. Um, so 2010 was a relatively poor year in terms of economic activity, but 2011 has gone much better. So I think um, many people out uh, in Montserrat will appreciate that. So I think um, there is a recognition that things are going better than they were in 2010. And that's reflected in the government statistics. So looking to the future, you mentioned, well, what are we doing uh, What are we doing to support Montserrat with regards to economic growth? Actually, no. I was asking you what it is we are saying that we are going to be doing. I, you, you've promised to support and, and I'm expecting it once, as you say, we can justify it and show the value for what we did. So that's a given. I'm expecting that. I'm expecting the support. So with all the constraints and the things that you're saying about we have to do this and so on and so on and so on. I accept it, I understand all of that. So I'm expecting the support. But what I don't know and what I think speaking for people is that we do not know other than construction. Because I've asked the chief minister to explain to the people how construction impacts the overall economy. We, we, we can understand that. But if it's not going to provide more employment than what, and that's the point I was making, that construction has always been there, the same people are, are being employed, but if it's not going to provide, what is there that will provide additional employment possibilities? We're not hiring um, the people, more people that are required in the public service. And I'll let you answer that and then I'll get on to that part. Uh, your question is, if I understood correctly, what is the government of Montserrat doing to support economic growth in the country? And I'm afraid I'm not in a position to argue, uh, to discuss that with you. I think you should have that discussion with the government of Montserrat. Um, I was we asking are, what they were telling you. We're, we're here to, uh, to provide support, uh, but they're the ones who are wanting to the way. And I suggest you have a, continue to have your discussion with the Premier about, uh, about these issues. Uh, following the Minister's visit, uh, having explored the options of both public and private financing for geothermal exploration, what decision has been made? Uh, uh, is there any road, particular route that you'll be going, whether it's private or public funding? Is that in relation to geothermal? Yeah. 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 The, the position that was agreed between the Premier and your Minister of State was that they should, first of all, look to see whether the private sector had any interest in this area. Credible interest, an interest that would help to take that initiative forward, that wouldn't require too much public investment, but at the same time be mindful of the sort of deal that the government would like to get with a, a private sector company. So that's a process that's underway at the moment. Yeah, the UK government's supporting that. We're working with, um, we have an expert that's working directly with the, your Ministry of Communications and Works in terms of looking to test the private sector to see whether or not that's uh, the, the best way forward. If that proves to be unsuccessful, then we would then move to the, the public option where we would consider putting public funds to take it to the next step. And that's going to happen over the next three to four months. That work's already underway. Um, we have spent a good proportion of this week um, going through their estimates for next financial year. Um, 
the budget as presented is um, in a similar, uh, it's very similar to what uh, was allocated last year, um, and it shows particular uh, restraint on behalf of government, and uh, we commend that uh, effort in uh, constraining public sector spending. Uh, we have looked at the revenue projections, and once we get those final figures, we'll be in a better position to give you an indication of how much we're able to uh, provide support for the next financial year. So I'm, I can't really give you uh, a figure, um, but once we get those uh, objections, we'll be able to give you more information. Good day. Can you tell us whether the unfilled vacancy um, has had an impact on the effective management of the civil service? Sure. Well, let me let me start off. Um, maybe Drew can uh, complement me here, but. Um, one of the reasons, one of the ways that the government has been able to restrain expenditure uh, during this financial year is um, those unfilled posts have created, in effect, a saving to government uh, through this financial year. Um, so I'm aware that some of the posts that have been vacant are, in fact, key critical posts. Um, and uh, the issue of whether and how government has been performing with regards to the fact that some staffing posts have not been filled, uh, that's a key question, and it's one that we've been asking as well. Um, but at the same time, we are aware that uh, there has been some financial savings as a result of those unfilled posts. Drew, is there anything else? Um, perhaps just a little more generally, I, I think we, we recognise us as governmental monster that the capacity remains a key issue, and you've highlighted some of the, the vacancies which are so critical to to delivery of government services and performance by the government. So we are committed to helping the government to look at that, both in the short term in terms of filling immediate vacancies, but also in the longer term through, for example, the, the annual country training scheme program to look at general long-term capacity development on the island. Thank you. Thank you. This issue of um, restraining, of restraint in um, say hiring staff, oh, I, I mean, it's not a question I want to get into, because that's more of a, a discussion type situation. If you don't hire key staff, then what does that do to management? What does it do to productivity of management? How do you manage efficiently? How can you do these things? Except the fact that you are not spending money for certain things. But are you losing money on the other hand by not having these? I mean, this key, key stuff. I see from your point of view, I can understand that you're saying savings and uh, where money is scarce and so on. But how does it really, does it not create a problem for the future? You started off by your statement by you said you don't want to ask that question. You no, no I, I really so don't. I'm not quite sure. It's a discussion, you see. So, I mean, it's something I'd like to go back and forth and, and, and discuss. So, maybe, no, forget it. <laughs> uh, uh, the, the, the thing is that. What if government has been stated time and time again that assistance to get the economy moving has to come from expenditure within government? And so do we understand if government is going to be curtailing its expenditure that the economy will suffer as a result? That's good. Does that follow? Um. The government plays a key role in uh, providing the enabling environment and by providing a key investment that then leads to stimulation of the private sector and the economy in general. And that is one of the roles of government. Now, we are very pleased that the government continues to prioritize these key capital investments that will lead to improved economic growth in Montserrat. And we've already mentioned a few of them uh, over the course of the last half an hour. All of, it is, all of it is in construction. And as I said before, the construction doesn't change. It, it's been always there. It's I'm, all we've had. I'm not, I'm not sure whether it is all in construction. Um, I wel welcome. Uh, it would be great if you could have that conversation again with uh, your, oh. 
your premier, but I'm, I'm, I understand that there are other investments taking place. Um, so, for instance, with regards to uh, the ferry, uh, the ferry, the airport, uh, tourism, uh, promotion in general, I mean, these are things that are not construction related, uh, but will lead to uh, increased tourism numbers and increased activity, economic activity on, uh, mm. on Montserrat. So it's not just about hardware, it's also about other activities that take place. Yeah, I, I, I would wholly agree with that response because um, I think what you're going to accept better is that in the first case, we're going to have the foundation for you know private sector to develop. And currently what you don't have is, for example, a functioning port. You don't have uh, proper access to the island. Um, the cost of energy is exorbitant on this island, and therefore investments in geothermal that will allow you to have energy independence and maybe, maybe the potential for lower energy costs will facilitate that private sector growth. Investments in an appropriate port facility will facilitate that growth as well. And if you look at access, it goes without saying that until we improve access on the island, you will not have the private sector growing at any levels that both you and I or the rest of those run will be happy with. So in the first instance, those are the areas that require immediate intervention. And it's not all construction, because in the, in the, in the, you know, there are other sectors of the economy that will be affected. For example, the construction of the port will require ancillary services. Here's an opportunity for most Russians to partake and get ready for that type of an investment. It goes beyond just construction. Even investments in geothermal will require support services on the island. And that would mean that most Russians can participate, can uh, move to the private sector, and uh, take part in that investment. So it's not just limited to construction. There are other sectors that will benefit from those investments. And there I got my answer for previous question. Um, and there's a, an answer coming from a man who's on the ground, really. Probably knows what he's talking about, or most likely knows what he's talking about, and that is the sort of thing that I want to hear. I think that's what people people want to hear that they want to hear what is it that's on the pipeline, what is it that's going to just talk other than just the words construction. But that's all we really hear. So that's, I'm grateful for that. I'm glad I'm able, able to publish exactly what you just said. I think all of that. Yeah, but Rick mentioned one important point: the enabling environment. And this is part of the bargain is for government of Ostra to put in place a specific set of reforms under the strategic growth plan mm -hmm. that will ensure that the civil service is more efficient in delivering, that there is increased productivity mm -hmm. from the civil service, but also makes sure that when an investor comes to Ostra, they are facilitated and that you know they don't see or incur the burdens that current investors, local investors, have to go through in order for them to make those investments. So it's, it's not just a one-way street, DFINE provides funding for capital projects, but in terms of that, you need to have the enabling reforms on the ground to be able to facilitate that investment. Last question for me. Um, membership in regional entities, regional organizations. I notice um, that there's going to be some concern about us reducing our our participation, well, anyhow, what it costs us to be in these groups and to be sure that we get value for money. How do we measure that? And what really is the concern of that? Uh, that's, that's a question for the government of Montserrat, really. They're, they're doing that review, and I understand uh, they'll be taking a decision on what uh, memberships and uh, organizations they want to continue to be members of. That's, that's for them to decide. Uh, how to proceed with them. Oh, that wasn't a concern from your end. I'm sorry. I mean, they started the process by at least taking all those, the, the payments to those ages and putting them in, into one place. So they're now under the jurisdiction of the Premier's office. So they now have a whole list of what these entities are and how much it costs on an annual basis. And that then gives them the information they need to think about, well, do we get good value from being a member of this organisation or should we actually reconsider what we get from it. So that's just the start of the process, but they've already got that underway. So it's a positive step.
in terms of trying to get value for money. I wanted to ask Mary, a social development advisor, your thoughts on what you are seeing um, on Montserrat as it re revolves around our social development. Um, I think this must be my fourth visit to Montserrat now. Um, uh, we, well, let me start by just saying that for part of um, this budget aid mission, we, we um, facilitated a review of the education system and in terms of the outcomes of that review, um, Montserrat's definitely progressing in terms of the uh, um, exam results that we've seen coming out of that. But um, the government knows that there's a lot more um, improvement that could be made in that area. And so we are going to um, uh, help them with our own advice to take to, to, to look at that as it goes forward. I mean, I think the government is setting new targets now for what it would like to see coming out of education. So that's that's quite positive. Um, I think we recognise that housing has always been a bit of an issue on the island. Um, and again, the government are prioritising that and we have been able to help um, over the years in different kinds of ways, most recently with the... Uh, housing programme for the mentally challenged and vulnerable which has been going ahead and, and, we, and the government has managed to um, build the facility at Oriel Gardens um, which is the warden assisted um, facility and they've also managed to um, construct another, a, a number of other um, houses and duplexes out of that. So I mean it's, it's taking time but I think the commitment is there. Um, and on health, um, I think the the indicators are, are, are fairly good, really, overall on health. I mean, again, there's always room for improvement. Um, and we're giving some assistance now to talk about the possibility of a hospital that will help with the secondary care needs um, over the next year. So, so our health advisor will work very closely with PS Health on that. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, we recognise that there are constraints, but we also recognise the commitments um, that the government makes within the constraints, particularly of a resource envelope. Um, and we will do our best with our advisors to step in where possible to, to offer advice and assistance. Okay, there has been a shift in having departments who previously submitted their budgetary estimates. It now has to go through the cabinet secretary. Government is working to try and improve the information it has in the budget so that it can it can track what money is going to what sectors and make sure that it aligns to its priorities. So it's it's more a question of making sure that the the information is there so that the, that the cabinet and the senior manager of the government can make sure the money is going to the right places in light of their objectives. So it's more a question about improving the information based on which to make decisions. Just to follow up a bit on that question, uh, I was told only yesterday um, someone expressed concern that it seems there's a shift by taking more of the development activity and discussion into the Ministry of Finance, away from the um, development unit. I don't know if your question had anything uh, to do with that, but is that correct? And and what are the advantages of that? The the, the, the comment was that they saw this as a backward step, actually. Um, the there has been a, a um, again. This is a question more for government, but I will I will do my best to answer um, my understanding. There has been a, a reorganisation of the centre of government now. Um, as a result of that, there's been the establishment of a, a cabinet secretariat, and then there's been some transfer of functions to the Minister of Finance. The purpose and the reason for that is to make sure that all uh, financial expenditure and, and monitoring and uh, responsibility for that is for the Minister of Finance, but the cabinet secretary is still be responsible for. Um, oversight of policy planning and performance um, by the uh, by the public service as a whole. So it, it's uh, putting the responsibilities in the place, but there will be a need for a very strong close working relationship between the Ministry of Finance and the Cabinet Secretary. Okay. 